How did Among Us and Vampire Survivors both fail upon release, but then explode in popularity months or even years later? Why do these two games blow up, and what sets these games apart from thousands like them? Well, to understand why these two games succeeded and others fail, we need to dive into the depths of indie games, game development, influencers, and game publishing. Let's go step by step to determine how and why these games succeeded. Firstly, let's start with the obvious. You need to make a good game. Surprise, surprise, I know but both Among Us and Vampire Survivors are good games. They have limited bugs, clear gameplay loops, a decent amount of variety, they're fun for different reasons, and are made for different people. However, making a good game isn't enough. Unlike AAA studios, indie developers can't rely on established branding and extensive marketing to sell their game. Many people will buy a AAA game no matter the quality, especially if it has Blizzard, Ubisoft, or Activision logo slapped onto it. Gamers trusted those brands in the past, so they trust them now. Beautiful. Oh my God, thank you. You haven't commented once on the flowers I brought Thank you. you, they're so lovely. But indie studios can't BS their way to millions of sales like AAA studios through branding and marketing. So games made by Inner Sloth or Couch Cushion Games need to be really good since they have no brand recognition. And if you're wondering or searching if these studios I just named are real, one is and one isn't. Can you tell which one is real? Some of you will recognize Inner Sloth as the studio behind Among Us, which means they have some brand recognition, right? So when they release another game, they'll likely sell more copies than Among Us did at release. But I'm guessing a decent amount of people didn't recognize Inner Sloth, even though Among Us was a global phenomenon. It takes time to build a brand, even for successful studios. So step two for indie studios to succeed is to start building a brand as soon as possible. But there's a problem. How do you build a brand with thousands of studios and games that look relatively the same? I mean, have you ever spent time looking through lists of upcoming indie games? You have no idea what is good or not. And although I talk the big talk about how indie studios will shape the future of gaming, there are a lot of garbage indie games and studios out there. And it can be really difficult to sift through the garbage to find the jewels. This is why Among Us and Vampire Survivors failed at first. When Among Us came out, the game had an average of 30 to 50 concurrent users. And when Vampire Survivors released, in the first month at its peak, it had 12 concurrent players. These games looked like huge failures. I mean, it took Among Us years to turn a profit. And although Vampire Survivors succeeded a lot quicker, Luca Galante, the creator of Vampire Survivors, still spent a year developing a game that look to have flopped. This is why branding and marketing is so important. You buy what you know and trust. And no one really knew or trusted Inner Sloth or Luca. And trust is the same reason why we go to McDonald's instead of the mom and pop diner when we're traveling. Not because McDonald's is good and the diner is bad, it's because I know what kind of experience I'm going to have at McDonald's, where the diner is too risky, even though it might have amazing food. So I choose what I know, I choose McDonald's. So if we were to go back in time to help Inner Sloth, Luca, and most indie studios studios avoid failure upon launch, I would be pushing these studios to start establishing a brand the moment they start writing code. So let's look at a few different ways indie studios can do that. First, you have the old fashioned way. Release a good game, early adopters will find it, play it, and spread the word to their friends. Usually very slow growth, and you have little to no traction at launch. This is the primary strategy both Inner Sloth and Luca took, which I'll explain in a moment why that was a bad choice, at least in the beginning. Second, you have the new media way by posting on social media or joining communities. The problem though with this method is that most of the time, it's just indie developers following other indie developers. That's not great. You aren't garnering much of a real audience and the people you do get are probably just following you, so you follow them in return. Third, you have events on Steam, itch.io, and other hosting platforms. These are great events that can definitely get your game some attention, and it's how Among Us got its first big break with itch.io. But again, you're fighting a bunch of other games for the spotlight. I wouldn't depend on these events for success. Fourth, you have the influencer way, where you gather a list of YouTubers and streamers' contact info and reach out to hundreds hoping someone will feature your game. Definitely a good approach, but even if you made a great game, it just may not be good content for streamers or YouTubers. So you need to consider the type of game you have made and what influencers would actually play. Fifth and last, become an influencer. This is the best option if you want to guarantee success at launch. Sounds great, right? Just become an influencer, no big deal. I get it. How can you become an influencer when you barely have time or money to make a game? Well, I argue that you can do both. You see, there's this unique marketing tactic 
that shouldn't work, but it does. It's called the devlog. The reason why I say devlog shouldn't work is the same reason why posting on social media about your game rarely garners much of a following. Most people don't care to hear about your product or game. We follow and subscribe to people on social media or YouTube or whatever platform you can think of because these channels or people provide us some sort of value. They entertain us. That's a good thing. It's good to be a little plump. They inspire us. I'm gonna attempt to collect 30 million pounds of trash from this river all by myself. They educate us. If you are like most people, there is a gap between the person you are and the person you wish to be. Which is why posting pictures or videos about your game on social media rarely work. But this is why devlogs are so odd. Devlogs are just developers talking about their game and they look like they aren't providing the viewer much value. But if done correctly, they do. Because just like the show How It's Made, or the TikToks showing a time lapse of a carpenter making a table, humans are interested in watching the process of creation, not in the outcome. So the finished product of a video may be what we are excited to see, but we only care about that beautiful wood table at the end because we were along for the ride. This is why games like Sapiens or Four Seasons have thousands of followers, and they're not even out yet. People like following the creation of something. So the beauty of devlogs is that you can be an influencer building community and a brand while still developing your game. So when you release it, just like the table, people are now excited to see the finished product. Now, I know I got into the weeds a little, but I want people to understand why Among Us and Vampire Survivors not only failed, but how they could have avoided failure in the first place. Building a brand and developing a game at the same time can be hard for sure, but you do it so that you avoid wasting too much time and money. Most people can't spend years developing a game and more years supporting it if it's not profitable. Indie developers only have a year of savings they can live on, maybe two if their diet consists of pure ramen. So if a game flops on release, most indie devs move on to developing something else and they move on quickly. Which by the way, is why we have so many obscure indie games on the market. Too much focus on development and not enough on marketing or branding. Okay, so how did Among Us and Vampire Survivors succeed if they failed so hard on release? I seem to be preaching this branding thing hard. Why then did these games succeed if they didn't do what I suggested? Well, step three on how to succeed in the indie market is why persistence, and timing, also known as the old-fashioned way. As I said, most studios quit and move on when their game fails on launch, which is why the old-fashioned way isn't usually the best choice, but not Intersloth or Luca. They both were able to take the long-term approach, Intersloth more so than Luca, with both studios creating a great base game, but they also continued to update their games and build community after launch month by month, just slowly growing until that pivotal lucky moment. As the saying goes, the longer you're in the game, the more likely you are to get lucky. And man, both these games got lucky. For Luca and Vampire Survivors, it happened a lot quicker than Among Us. The game was released in December of 2021, riding high in their 12 peak players living in obscurity. Then all of a sudden, one month later, Splattercat, a prominent YouTuber, picked it up. Vampire Survivors peak players went from 12 to almost 51,000 in a few weeks the game exploded into popularity. Among Us was a little different. It took almost a year of slow growth, barely profiting off their sales until Gojanot picked it up. And then Cave, and then months later, Soda Poppin picked it up. Among Us went from 30-ish concurrent players in 2018 to having over 100 million downloads before the end of September in 2020. Absolutely insane numbers. Now, I know Vampire Survivor's success isn't nearly as comparable to Among Us with 100 million downloads, but I wanted to talk about both these games because they each succeeded after failing first. And these games are really interesting because they share some other similarities. First, they were both good games that were made by no-name developers. Second, both developers did little to nothing to market their game. Third, both games had pretty pitiful releases, but skyrocketed in success when streamers or YouTubers picked them up. That said, you don't sell thousands or millions of copies as an indie developer because a streamer or YouTuber picked your game up. So why did these games sell so many copies? What made these games stand out? And what made these games so special? Because of step number four, timing and pricing your game. Now we all know that Among Us blew up because of the pandemic. It was easy to pick up and you could play with your friends remotely during a time we couldn't be in person. But what's different about Vampire Survivors is that when the game came out, it was new, it was unique, it was exciting. 
The game felt reminiscent of arcade games with its roguelike repeatable gameplay, and that loot just gave you a dopamine hit every time you opened it. Which by the way, was intentional. Luca worked on gambling games in the past and knew how to make loot opening feel like hitting the jackpot. But Luca really was the first to market with this type of game. And because it was the first of its kind, he created a whole new subgenre, with copycats popping up everywhere lately. You could argue there was other games similar, but he really started the wave. Now, the price is the last piece to the puzzle. Both of these games were priced below $5, with Vampire Survivors costing $3.99 and Among Us costing $4.99 on release. Now I'm speculating here, but I believe that the price of these games were the final key to their success. Yes, they're both great games. Yes, they got picked up by influencers at the right time, but what caused these games to blow up was that their price was so low, so when streamers and YouTubers played these games and viewers saw that the price was lower relatively to most games, people just bought the games off emotion thinking, hey, it's just $5 or just $4, I'll give it a try. You see, this is an old sales trick that most people don't understand. If you price your product in the lowest bracket of cost in comparison to the products around you, you are more likely to not think critically about the purchase. This is why grocery stores place all those cheap little items in the checkout line, because you'll be looking around while you wait in line and just like the cheap game, think, hey, I've been wanting a new chapstick, and you grab the Burt's Bees even though that wasn't on your shopping list. It's an emotional buy. So why did Among Us and Vampire Survivors fail, then succeed? They failed because they didn't build a community and brand before launch, but they succeeded because they were good games, they persisted until the timing was right, the studios were lucky that their games got picked up by influencers at an optimal time, and they priced their games so low that people purchased them off emotion. With all that said, you can see how difficult it can be to get your game out there, which is why we are trying to highlight an indie game after each video we do. This week, our Discord community picked Tunic, an isometric Souls-like game where you follow the journey of a small fox on his way to becoming a legend. Tunic's gameplay feels like a combination of the Legend of Zelda series and Metroidvania rolled into one. Explore a world filled with puzzles, unique enemies, an amazing soundtrack, and so much more. The game was developed by Tunic Team. You can find Tunic on various platforms such as Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. If you want to get your game or one of your favorite indie games highlighted in our next video, come join our Discord and let us know what game we should feature next. 